This screencast will showcase how a batch reactor for ethanol fermentation was designed. It was created for the course Reaction Engineering in the fall of 2018. Myself, Taylor Manorino, Bemi, Kristen, Itty, and Victoria are very proud of it. Our objective was to design a batch reactor that generates ethanol from glucose fermentation, but also to ensure that this reactor could be scaled to account for differing initial concentrations, operating hours, number of reactors, and desired amount of ethanol product. All of these will be further explored throughout the presentation. This picture was created to showcase our design. We have one filling port and one harvest port. It's well stirred with two impellers, and the air vent is there to keep it operating at isothermal conditions while also as a safety um, precaution. Fermentation has three relevant reactions. The first being glycolysis, which is used to convert glucose, C6H12O6, into pyruvates. The second is pyruvate decarboxylation, an alcohol dehydrogenation, which converts pyruvates into the desired product of ethanol. This third reaction is the undesired reaction, and that is aerobic respiration. This occurs when the system gets exposed to oxygen. For the overall design and scaling of the system, MATLAB was used. These literature values were found from Mohamed Kazizada and utilized in the program. Here, CP star is the final product concentration. C naught is the initial concentration of the substrate. KS is the monod constant. M is the cell maintenance. KD is the cell death rate constant. Mu max is the maximum specific cell growth rate and the three Ys stand for the maximum yield, where C is cell, P is product, and S is substrate. It's important to note that in the MATLAB code, there was a user interface that allowed for different initial concentrations and values to be entered for these. These equations were utilized in the MATLAB program as well. The change in concentration of the cells with respect to time is equal to the growth minus the death rate, and as you can see, other mass balances depend on maximum yields as well. The rate law of growth given is dependent on the maximum specific cell growth rate, the ratio of ethanol concentration relative to the final concentration, and the according cell and substrate concentrations. The other two rates are much more easily defined as the cell death rate constant and the cell maintenance constant times the concentration of the cell. Finally, taking into account the stoichiometry that the rate of product is equal to the maximum yield times the growth rate, we are able to combine all relevant equations and run them in the MATLAB file. As you can see in this graph, the cycle time was around 8.5 hours. This means that means that one batch would take eight and a half hours to complete. The glucose concentration goes down significantly while the ethanol concentration rises significantly. There will be some yeast in the ethanol product, therefore an additional step of distillation will probably be required. Now that we have the basis of the calculations, we wanted to scale it to different reactions. In our example, we chose to produce 25,200 tons per year of ethanol. This is because in Florida, a typical processing plant creates 252,000. Since we are a much smaller scale batch reactor company, we wanted to produce one-tenth of the total demand. As mentioned before, the cycle time was around eight and a half hours per batch. We also assumed that the reactor operated 8,400 hours per year so that we could include some time for maintenance and vacation. Finally, to reach the ethanol demand, we assume that there would be three of our reactors operating simultaneously. The calculations below show that with three reactors, each volume would be around 83.6 meters cubed, which was reasonable compared to the literature values found for a typical batch fermentation. Um, the MATLAB file associated with this project allows for the user to input different product quantities, 
operating hours, and number of reactors to output the best reactor volumes for that specific process. Carrying on from the 25.2 thousand tons per year example, an economic analysis was completed. Here you can see a table of the prices of yeast and glucose, the amount used in our three reactors, and the overall associated cost. You can also find the selling price of ethanol, the amount produced per year, and the associated revenue. This generated an overall profit of $19.5 million per year. In our reactor, we assumed that it was isothermal with constant density and constant volume. Therefore, since it was assumed to be isochoric, the pressure is a function of time. One could also assume that it was isobaric, then the volume would alter as a function of time. As with any reactions in large-scale reactors, there are a lot of safety hazards that need to be addressed. Ethanol itself is highly flammable. Therefore, no open flames, sparks, smoking, or contact with strong oxidants can occur. It's also in a very explosive, so the proper ventilation was necessary um, and no compressed air can be used. Ethanol is a skin and eye irritant, so one must wear protective gloves and safety goggles. It is also a hazard if inhaled or ingested. Therefore, again, the proper ventilation is required um, breathing protection is also mandatory, and one should not eat, drink, or smoke while handling. Batch reactors are known for thermal runaways, and therefore our system was designed with early warning detection systems and to run isothermally. Here is a comprehensive list of all of the assumptions that were used for this design. First, since it's a completely batch reactor, there is no input or output of, react of reactants or products during the reaction. As discussed before, an undesired reaction occurs when oxygen is present, so the system is anaerobic. The reactor is well mixed, isothermal, and at constant volume. The reactants are constant density and there are no phase changes. A catalyst is typically used in fermentation reactions. In this case, we used Saccharomyces cerisius, which is known as brewer's yeast. It's beneficial to us because it's easy to maintain in the lab. Many studies have been done with it, so it has very predictable effects, and it even contributes to the taste and smell of the beverages. Finally, now that with this example we have produced 25.2 thousand tons per year of ethanol, these are some ways that it can benefit our society. Our intention was to use it for alcoholic beverages like wine, beer, brandy, whiskey, etc. But it also has um, implica applications in food and non-alcoholic beverages, chemicals such as paints, thermometers, antifreeze, and bioplastics, cosmetics like perfumes and deodorants, and pharmaceuticals like medicine, wipes, or antiseptics. That brings us to the end of our screencast. Here are all of the references utilized in our project. Thank you so much for watching.